here at Distributech 2023, one of the sponsors of these interviews, and these are interviews with thought leaders from around North America and the globe. Uh, our sponsors are H2 Scan. H2 Scan is uh, the leading sensor uh, manufacturer for hydrogen sensing uh, in a lot of different applications and transformers in uh, battery room safety, in uh, processes in safety and in industrial, and in the future hydrogen economy. So I wanna thank our sponsors and I wanna thank all of our guests. And I hope you enjoy this interview. My next guest is Denny Miller. She's the Senior Vice President of Installation Products. That's correct, right? Installation Products for ABB, the Americas. North America, South America. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you joining us. First of all, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get into the power industry? Yeah. So right out of school, I had the opportunity to join GE, one of their leadership programs. And in that organization, I was part of the electrification business. So that's how I started in the industry, actually in finance. So I spent my first four years in finance and rotated through different businesses, one of them being lighting, which at the time was coupled with the industrial business. And then from there, moved around GE. And in 2018, GE Industrial Solutions was acquired by ABB. And that's how I've ended up at ABB. And it's been a tremendous journey over the past 19 years. Yeah, that's we're going to talk about that journey. But um, when I first saw SVP of in, installation products, I thought, I don't know what that is. I know transformers, okay? I know power grids. I know that. What does it mean? It's funny because typically we have acronyms that we have to describe, but this right, one is, exactly. is, is a tongue yeah, right. twister. So installation product sales is actually the legacy, the former Thomas and Betts business. Oh, okay. So in Got 2010... It. Uh, ABB acquired the installation products business, which we've named, which was Thomas and Betts. Uh, so it's been, actually it was 2012, I apologize. Yeah, so it's been 10 years since the acquisition has taken place. Uh, and we've invested tremendously in the business, but that is the, uh, the installation products business that we are today. And we really are the electrical connected tissue of an electrical system. So ABB makes everything from the source to the socket, but installation products is that connected thread through the electrical system. Wait a minute, source to the socket. I source. love that. Source I'm going to use that from now on. I'm going to give you attribution. That's just brilliant. Source to the socket. Um, so we've covered you. We've covered the role you do. I want you to step back for a minute and look at your customer base. Okay, the people that they're, they're going through more change now than they ever. The utility industry is going through change more than it ever has, sure. right? Because everything is changing. Distributed energy resources, um, smart grids, microgrids. A lot is happening. What do you think the biggest challenges are that they're facing? Yeah, there's been a tremendous amount. I mean, this market is dynamic. It's unlike anything we've ever seen. I think there's a variety of challenges and also opportunities for the industry. What we're seeing consistently, and we've been meeting with customers here today, um, first is labor. It doesn't matter if you're a manufacturer, if you're a distributor, uh, if you're an industrial manufacturer, OEM, even yeah, utilities, uh -huh. IOUs, yeah. right? All of the above, it's labor. So what we're doing about it is really, we're trying to look um, through different lenses of how can we bring non-traditional workers to the workforce. So one of the things that ABB is very involved with are DNI groups, diversity and inclusion groups. So we're active members in NSBE, the National Society of Black Engineers. We're active in SWE, the Society of Women Engineers, in terms of how can we bring a diverse workforce into this, traumatic, this uh, dramatic industry that we're in. So that's one thing. The other thing that we're doing is, is different things to keep people, right? It's how do you retain talent, but then how do you keep them is another big focus for us. Uh, and we've worked with many of our partners just to brainstorm and bounce ideas. So it's working. Can we be better? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the second thing, Alan, outside of labor, I'd say is lead times. Oh, yeah. So the amount, yeah. the amount of extended lead times, we look at things like power transformers, right? I mean, that really is, talk about the pinnacle of an electrical system. So 70% of all power transformers and power transmission lines have been installed for over 25 years. So when you think about that turnover and that investment with lead times out over a year, it's a challenge for us. So we are downstream from those transformers, but we're bringing additional investment and manufacturing to the U.S. Um, we have new manufacturing, uh, a new EV uh, charger plant in South Carolina. Right. So a lot okay. of investment to have um, dual manufacturing. Right, right, right. The supply, we, we, so we all, we've had supply chain issues, particularly with COVID, right? Last year at IEEE PES, 
That was the thing. It wasn't labor. It was supply chain issues. Now it is supply chain issues, labor, and demand curve issues. Because we have got an accelerating demand curve for, for everything electric, right? We're changing the entire grid. I mean, we're going from a transformer step-down basis to an inverter base. I like to call it step everywhere, right? Power's going in and out and up and down and everything like that. How does that affect what you do at ABB, what your, your group does at ABB? Yeah. I mean, like I say, we're that connected thread in the electrical system. So it doesn't matter if it's a recloser, a transformer, lugs, we are part of it. So what I do specifically is lead the sales organization. It's just about the strategy and how do we work with our partners to make sure that we have dynamic solutions that can meet their applications. There's no longer a one size fits all because the narrative today on how you build a system is very different from the past. So it's a lot of collaboration with R&D, with the customers and with our manufacturing teams to make sure that we can take care of that specific application, not just a general solution. Since you're building EV charger uh, plant, I'm going to go, uh, uh, I'm going to talk specifically about that. Electrification of transportation is going to change everything. Henry Ford made cars and then he made cars mass produce. He had a problem. He had no gasoline stations all over the country. So wherever there was gasoline, he could sell cars. And he made a deal with Henry Rockefeller, Standard Oil, to say, you put gas stations and I'll put dealerships. And, and that's where we are today. Gas stations on every corner, cars can go everywhere. We have that problem with EV if we don't have enough charging stations around and we don't have interconnectability. You know, now you pull up to a charge, I recently did with my rental car, it didn't work. I couldn't get power. I was so angry. It's like, why don't these people talk to each other? Right? Absolutely. So you're going to have the same problem. Tell me about how. ABB is addressing that since you're building an EV charging yeah. station. So it's built. I mean, we are okay. there right now okay. in terms of how do we ramp up production, right? And I would say it's similar on the EV side in terms of chargers, but if you can't plug a charger into a switchboard, to a panel to make sure that power is distributed, right. it's also no good. So we truly are looking at the entire grid to make sure that we have that infrastructure. So additional capacity in our plants, making sure that we have automation in all that we do. So labor is going to continue to be challenge right. how do we make sure that they're self-fulfilling right we need people people are core to engineering they're core to our sophistication but we need to think differently about how we produce products well I've been to your ABB transformer plants I've been to the one in uh, Boston with South Boston Virginia and the one in, in uh, Missouri and the one thing I will say about them, transformers are still made by hand you know they're still very manual labor oriented is that true with the EV charging we have assembly plants in South Carolina, so it's it's manual, but there's app, there, there's opportunities for us to automate where we can. Okay. And those transformer plants, we've actually sold off now to Hitachi, so they're no long not, no longer part of the portfolio. Oh no! So that um, that's been completed, but we are working, you know, on what we can control ABB in terms of that entire grid. We're, I want to we're going to come back to labor, but I want to move to something else. We know what the problems are today. Ten years ago, we didn't know these problems would be there. What are the problems ten years down the road? You've you're been in the industry long enough. You're smart. You've got to be looking ahead as a senior vice president. What do you see coming down the road as the problems yeah. for the industry? We talk a lot about this. I think safety and security is something that hasn't gotten enough attention in terms of vandalism of grids, in terms of human inter intervention to prevent really the distribution of power. You know, we never think about where the power comes from until it goes out. I have two little kids. I have a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old, and I teach them a lot about power. And when the power goes out, their world is over, right? There's no <laughs> iPads. There's no video games. Yeah. And when we think about cybersecurity and what it means from an electrical distribution standpoint, it's a big concern of mine. And I think as an industry, we really need to unite to make sure that we protect the infrastructure and the grid, and we have digital capabilities to manage it. You know, people now fire rifles at substations, which is crazy, and there's no way to protect random acts of stupidity, which is what that is. Um, but the, the, the cybersecurity issue of building the interconnected grid is incredibly important. And I don't see a lot of people doing it. I hear a lot of people talking about it, but I don't necessarily see people doing it. Because it is the weakest link is that interconnection with something that you do and something that somebody else does or with the install base that the utility already has. That connection is the weakest link. I mean, if you've got security and they've got security, but that's not secure, that's the weakest link. So the idea that cybersecurity is going to be more and more important, you're in an, in, in, 
installation business. How do you handle cybersecurity issues now? Yeah, so it's something that I'd say has been learned for us in terms of how do we make sure we have digital capabilities in our equipment, right? right? So some of our equipment is connected, some of it is not, right? In terms of electric current actually flowing through it. That that has current flowing through it, how do we make sure that we can see on time? We can make sure that resiliency is a focal point. We can make sure that the utility who's actually measured on uptime has the ability to go in there and if they need to reset a system, they can. So it's a focus for us as we come up with new products in terms of new product capabilities to make sure that we understand what customers are going to need in the future and we're thinking a few steps ahead. One of the things that in utilities hate is truck rolls, right? Got a problem, got to roll a truck out there. I got to put men and women in harm's way. I got to have them take a vehicle out, take all the equipment out, drive, from, whatever it is, whatever the truck roll does. As you do installation products, are you looking at that to somehow say, look, if there is a way to electronically fix something, or at least detect it, maybe we don't fix it, maybe the truck roll is to the right spot where there's a problem. Are you all seeing anything that you're doing with that right now? We are, so we're doing it two ways, I'd say. One is we think about, like you say, no one wants to roll the truck out. We also want to make sure that there doesn't have to be four people in that truck, right? If there <laughs> could like be that, yeah. one person in a oh, truck, perfect, that's perfect, even more right. efficient, right? Solve the labor problem Exactly, too, yeah. so we, we talk a lot about the ease of installation. Touch it once, install it, and be done. Ooh. So why, how do we have low maintenance or maintenance-free equipment? How do we make sure things like the weight of the equipment is more compact and lighter so you don't need four people in a bucket to lift something, you could do it with one. So we're doing that. And, and then we're also looking at how do we make sure that you have technology that connects back so you know exactly from well, an asset deployment standpoint where that piece of equipment is, where the failure is, so we can address that and not have to test the entire cycle. You're kind of addressing all of the problems we're talking about with, with one fail swoop. Labor problems, one to four. You got one person in a four. Uh, detectability, where is the problem going right to that? And then build in some of the resiliency in the in the product itself. Resiliency, reliability, safety, the, the three main, I was the president of the Electric Power Reliability Alliance and that was our mantra. And I wish I'd call it the Electrical Power Reliability, Resilience and Safety Alliance, but I didn't. Um, th those three things are what the utility wants. And sometimes they are at risk when we've, when we've got outages, when we've got problems, because you said that. They are, uh, they're measured on their uptime, right? And, and punished for their downtime. And there are a lot of things they can't control, like weather, weather events, fires, things like that. You live with it, but it's how quickly you get back up. That's resiliency. Reliability is, it lasts for a long time. In the resiliency part of it, how are you all addressing resiliency as a need from the utility industry? Yeah, so I'll give you, you know, it's something that we've, we've really, I'd say, learned and it's evolved for us, right? So we think about natural disasters, just weather interference, right? So over the past 10 years, the number of weather-related storm outages is close to 80%, right? It's 78%, it's up. So we track that very closely. The horrific hurricanes recently with Ian and Nicole, we were deploying assets before the hurricane. We were working with our distribution partners to make sure that we had material in the states, not at the location, because again, it goes back to that detection of where does the material actually go, but making sure that we can rebound as quickly as possible. So to your point, uptime is impacted, it will be, but it's minimally. So it really is about working with our partners to make sure that we can address proactively before challenges become pretty massive. Okay. I'm going to go back around to the first one of the first things you said, labor. Okay. Um, back in the day, and this is 10 years ago, we used to do surveys in the, in the industry of what do employees want? You know, what makes a good place to work? Number one, pay. Number two, benefits. Number three, job security. Do you know what the number one is today? Meaningful work. I, and that I'm making a difference. And, and you know, we, you just said you're trying to attract people, but giving them an opportunity to do something that makes a difference is really cool. I mean, that's what people want. And that's what we do, right? We're having to compete with Amazon and, and uh, Microsoft and all these people hiring smart people away. And we got to get, and the utility industry has been very staid. You know, you go, you stay 15, 20 years, 30 years, you retire. It's not the way it is anymore. It's very dynamic and changing. So um, as you're doing the things that you're talking about working with other groups, those that are not part of your black engineer group or your women, uh, STEM programs, things like that. Just in the recruitment of, of your everyday tradespeople, 
how is ABB handling that? So in a variety of ways, because there's nothing more important than our people, right? So when we think about the purpose, purpose and mission statement, right? That's what it really comes down to. So we're electrifying the world, right? That's I mean, that, mission statement, that, electrifying that, the world? That grid to socket, I mean, that's truly what we're doing. So we want to be not only the employer of choice, but we want people to see and feel their impact. So we talk about, you know, carbon neutrality. How do we make sure that we're helping make the world more sustainable? And it really is the mission of who we are. So we tell that story. We're going to universities. We're going to non-traditional means of how do we get involved with veterans, people who are coming back from deployment to make sure that they have longevity. They're looking at trades. They're looking at really how do they continue making an impact after they've come back from, from protecting our country. So there's a lot that we're doing. But to your, to your earlier statement, it comes back to telling that story, right? People don't think about our industry as necessarily as attractive as the big tech. But we have a bigger impact that we can make than I would argue the tech companies have done over the past 10 years. Well, you make coming into uh, the utility industry and particularly into ABB seem attractive. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for joining us, Demi. I appreciate yeah, it Yeah, thanks very for the much. time. Okay. Yeah, thank you. This has been an APC Technologies production, and we thank you for joining us. Our sponsors have been H2Scan and Distributech, and of course, the communities of APC Technologies, which is Transform Technology, Power Systems Technology, Green Energy Technology, and Women in Power Systems. So thank you. Mm -hmm.